Tiger Woods is back and fresh off his first start in 10 months. We examine Tiger's game, tee to green, off the tee. He hit more than two-thirds of his fairways and wowed the crowds with his distance. Woods just mere percentage points worse with his approaches into the greens in the Hero World Challenge and around the greens. You can call it the good, the bad, and at times the ugly. We break down Tiger's short game and look ahead to where we may see him next. It's all tonight on Golf Central. The week it was, Tiger Woods not just returning to the big stage, but putting the golf world on notice that he still has what it takes to compete at the highest level. Lisa Cornwell, Trip Eisenhower. Let's get to it. we got yeah. a lot to talk about. Let's start with these highlights, and there were plenty for the 14-time major champion. Trip round one here at the par 5 third. Third shot ball slightly above his feet, trying to hit a cut back into the wind. 260, this is a two iron, and boy, oh boy, that was hit on the button right there exactly where you had to put it. I was standing behind him when he hit that, and when he started walking, you knew that that was going to be something special. It certainly was. He would two-putt for birdie there. Still in the first round, now at 14. This is what I love. You do not see a lot of the younger players taking a pitching wedge from 88 yards, flighting it down. That's exactly what Tiger Woods did. That is textbook right there. Stopping it on a dime. He would shoot a 69 in round one now. In the second round here at nine. Well, there was pop on his fastball from start to finish. This 282 three wood. He said he actually took a little off this, Lisa. Believe it or not, off a three wood from 282. Must be nice. Yeah. He would fire a 68 in round two. Everybody, including the Twitter world, going crazy. A few hiccups, though, in round three. Yeah, he did. He struggled. Uh, Really, from start to finish, this is one of the few highlights that we can show from the third round. Beautiful, nice little draw riding the wind. That's a seven iron and a fantastic look at birdie. There weren't many of these, Lisa. Look, you could see how the winds were blowing. Everybody struggled in they round did. three. No rounds in the 60s. Yeah. You never lose that putting touch. And boy, he had that all week. His tempo on the greens was just incredible. Let's go to the final round. And the famous red and black. Oh, uh, yeah. I think we've seen that a time or two, haven't we? We certainly have. And Sunday we, red for Tiger. And we've seen this a time or two in his career. Just that golf swing never slowed down. He said he felt great all week long. And why wouldn't you when you're hitting drives like that? Yeah, and this was a, a hold, a short par seven that he, he eagled in the pro-am. The guys were all taking that driver and going for it little narrow yeah. entryway and he's able to navigate it and then this little left to rider. One of the best putting strokes technically of all time. That is one thing that has never changed. And he was thrilled. The crowd was too. A really small, intimate crowd. They enjoyed it. A final round 68 for Tiger Woods. How about these numbers though, Trip? Some big numbers actually. A day since he completed 72 holes, 364. The day since he shot a final round of 68 or better, 855. And then look at that big number, 2010 days since he had a final round with seven birdies and an eagle made. Here's Tiger throughout the week in his own words. I miss playing golf for fun. <clears throat> Go out there and hit and giggle and play for some denominations and, and have a good time. I had done that in two years. Uh, I play nine holes here and 18 holes here and then I have to take three days off because my back was killing me and um, I hadn't been able to play fun golf like that with my friends in such a long time. And I forget being competitive. I found the rhythm of the round by the second hole. You know, I, after I hit that eight iron in there pin high, uh, I, I felt okay, you know, I've, I've got the rhythm. And on three, I just, I smashed a drive down there and then no, 265 into the wind with a two iron and just hit on a rope, put it up there on the green. Um, I knew I was back, back playing again. One word to describe today. Successful. So I went out there and shot 31 in the front nine. You know, I built upon what I did yesterday. I cleaned it up. Tiger Woods now sits alone atop the board. It feels good. It feels good to be out here fighting again. Uh, I've, I've missed, uh, I've missed the fight. And getting out there and competing and fighting against the golf course and the rest of the guys, it's, it's so much fun. And I just missed, uh, I missed doing this. It was a rough start. I mean, I, whatever I did right ended up in a bad spot. And whatever I did wrong, it was really wrong. Um, I just couldn't get it turned, turned around. It kept going the wrong way. But I birdied 14, but I've already played four par fives and I hadn't made a birdie yet. Uh, that's not very really good. 
this is the way I was, I've been playing at home, and uh, when I came down here and played, I was playing very similar to this. Not quite as as far, but I didn't have the adrenaline going. Uh, but overall, I'm, I'm very pleased. I'm excited the way this uh, this week has gone on. Um, you know, with the not only the competitive rounds, but also you know all the the duties at night. It was a very good week. It certainly was a good week from Tiger. We saw a lot of positives coming out of there. The driver, the putter, the long irons. If there was one issue, yeah. and it wasn't like anything we saw a couple of years ago no. when people were using that yip word. He wasn't there, but he did have a few issues chipping. Well, he did. And, and what I think it is, uh, people use the yip word. I don't think it's necessarily that. Now, he does have a, probably a loss of confidence because of some of the scar tissue that's built up from some of the poor chipping. But I think it comes from being caught in between methods. And I think Tiger is used to not be a shaft lean chipper, and he used to be a guy that released the club. Now, the difference is it all has to do with using the back of the sand wedge, which is the bounce. And that's what uh, really great chippers tend to do. Now, there are great chippers that have chipped with just the leading edge, but you have such a fine line and a huge margin for error. And if you look at Tiger Woods in his heyday, he used to release the club. He would return the club back to its address position. And if you look at that, you start here, the shaft is here, it returns exactly to that position. And now he's got a little bit more shaft lean. And again, if you were a shaft Kathleen Chipper your whole career. Nothing wrong with that. Greg Norman comes to mind. He was a fantastic chipper. But if we saw what Tiger Woods did this last week and where he's going to struggle is on these tight lies with a lot of grain. And that's what Albany presents. Now, I don't think Tiger would have struggled as, as badly as he did here with his old technique because there is so much more margin for error with it. Just releasing that club more and getting the shaft lean out. And it, I think it's just going to be a transition for, period for Tiger to go back to it. We've said this multiple times. You never lose your talent. Tiger was one of the most talented short game players ever. I would put him as one of the top three short games in the history of the game. And the players that released the club and used the bounce, as Tiger used to, had a wider variety of shots around the greens. Here he is chipping off the green. We saw this multiple times over the weekend. And this is where I think if Tiger spends some time, he will get back to the way he used to chip so much quicker. You can see he, the shaft lean here, but he's driving the ball. He's trying to hit it low. That's beautiful contact, and he's got such a small margin for error. He did that absolutely perfectly. But if he got on that same kind of lie at home, he's got a green in his backyard. If he got there and he spent some time on that putting green off a really tight lie and didn't try to drive it but tried to hit it as high as he could, that's where you're going to really find out if you're using that bounce and returning the club back to its address position. Again, Lisa, he's been there before. I don't think it's going to be a huge amount of time for him to get that back. And then once that technique comes back and he's got a huge variety of shots again, the confidence will skyrocket as yeah, well. Yeah, and you mentioned the conditions at Albany. It's interesting. He puts his chipping to the test in what Jordan Spieth honestly called the toughest conditions yeah. that they face all year. So a lot that he can learn from. This. Well, it is. But here's the other thing, too. And when on those tight lines, the reason why the bounce is so great is because it absolutely gives you a, a huge margin for error before the ball and after the ball. You've got about an inch before the ball and an inch after because you're coming in so shallow and you, that margin for error gives you the ability to hit it off those difficult lies. So again, I think Tiger's going to figure this out. I think he's going to look at some tape, go back to what he used to do. And like I said, he had one of the top three short games, in my opinion, in the history of the game. He'll have it again. No doubt. And we watched him throughout the week. He hit a lot of good chip shots. So, he did. As you said, the technique can be there and build on it. Yeah, absolutely. All right. All right. For more on Tiger, let's go to Matt Adams, Tim Rosafort, and Rex Hoggard. Lisa, thank you. Rex, you had all week to follow Tiger around. Did you have a sense of ascendancy that solid play was imminent? I think we all had expectations. We'd all heard the stories about back home playing with Ricky Fowler and Justin Thomas and how far he was hitting the ball. Got a glimpse of it on Monday, played nine holes with Patrick Reed, and Patrick Reed could not stop gushing when he came off the golf course. Talked about effortless power, and he was bombing it by Patrick during that practice round. And it just seems he got better and better as the week went by. Look, we're talking about his driver. This used to be a liability for Tiger Woods, and all of a sudden now it's part of his arsenal. It's something he can lean on. 
So I think that gave everybody a lot of optimism. But I think Ricky Fowler said it best, to be quite frank with you, on Sunday after Ricky had won. He said, I don't think anybody expected him to do better than that. Mm -hmm. We weren't expecting him to, to win, to be quite frank. That's not, not being disrespectful at all. It was just realistic after 10 months away from the game. So it, it was expectations, but they were very much limited until he actually started playing. Now, you mentioned Ricky Fowler and the fact that Ricky Fowler told you those comments after Sunday's play was mm -hmm. complete. Did you get a chance to speak with any of the other pros after they had completed or after Tiger had completed his tournament to get a sense of how impressed they were once the green light actually went on? Probably asked a half a dozen guys, can Tiger Woods win in 2018? And point blank, all of them had the exact same answer. Absolutely. Patrick really? Reed said it flatly. He said, look, I just hope he's not playing the events I play in because the way he's playing right now, he certainly has the game for it. And I'll go back to a text that Davis Love III sent Tiger on Monday, and Davis told me about this text. It was very, very simple. If you play 20 events a year for the next three years, you're going to figure it out. You're an athlete, you're very talented, and as long as you stay healthy, absolutely his peers think he can win again. Wow, that's impressive. Now, Rosie, obviously it all starts with the foundation of the golf swing. What are you hearing about Tiger's swing now? Cut up with Butch Harmon today. Pleasantly surprised uh, was the way he described his emotions. The things that stood out to him was how free he was throughout his golf swing. He admitted he was one of those who wondered if Tiger would ever play again, much less be able to compete in tournaments, and now we have to see where it goes from here. But I think it's fantastic for the game of golf and for Tiger, obviously. And he gave a lot of praise to Chris Como, uh, who was really uh, on call more than he is a full-time swing instructor, so to speak. And he said it must be nice to – he sent him a text to Como saying it must be nice to work on, with uh, Tiger when he's healthy for a change. And uh, – Obviously, he was, and we saw the result. Where do we go from here, then, Rosie? Is there excitement building for what might be Tiger's schedule, say, in the West Coast? Excitement. Uh, all the tournament directors are meeting with, with, with the commissioners of the, of the PGA Tour, Jay Monahan and, uh, and Greg McLaughlin, this week down in Boca Raton. So big buzz there, and, of course, up and down the state of California. The tournament's there. Checked in with all three today. Steve John at Pebble Beach talked about when Tiger plays, in his golf tournament, in a golf tournament, it represents a 15% increase in everything. He hasn't played a pebble until 2000, since 2012. Phil, Phil won that week. Tiger shot 75 on Sunday. Peter Rippa, down at the Farmers Insurance Open Tournament Director, they usually have the in because Tiger's won there eight times, including the U.S. Open. But Rippa acknowledges that the priority this year is probably going to be towards Tiger's tournament, uh, the Genesis Open up at Riviera. And uh, talk to... Uh, Michael Yamaki today, a longtime friend of mine who uh, basically runs the club, and uh, he said he goes way back with Tiger uh, since the, the first time he played at age 16, and uh, he's always teasing Tiger and back and forth, and Tiger wants to know, Rex, when are you going to change that picture up behind a pro shop uh, counter that shows me here at 16 years old? And Yamaki simply said, when you win, we'll change the photo. So we shall wait and see when that opportunity arises, because now it's...